we are very lucky, fortunate to have two excellent speakers tonight from the organization Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. I'd like to welcome uh, Sandra Gutierrez and Kathy Jensen, and um, you have the floor. Um, so I'll start off because then Sandra's going to take us on a little journey too. So I'm Kathy Jensen. I'm a co-lead for Moms Demand Action. The full name is Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. And Sandra? Um, and hi, everyone. My name is Sandra Gutierrez. I am also the co-lead. I um, am moved to Tucson in 2016. And in um, about 2019, I got involved with the organization. I do want to point out and say that um, I did lose a friend to domestic violence. And I wanted to say her name tonight, Renee. Um, she was murdered in a gun suicide um, and, and a murder suicide. So um, because October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, I did want to mention Renee um, tonight and her memory because it is a big reason why I do this work. Thank you. So we're going to go back and forth just on some slides and what our priorities are. So I'm going to start us off with my why. Um, which um, aligned with Shannon Watts. I'm a public educator by trade. And so the constant um, lockdown drills and of course school shootings making the news brought me to this work. And that's what started Moms Demand Action. So it was founded by Shannon Watts. She has since turned over the reins to another, um, one of our great leaders who Sandra will talk about in a second. But there are 10 million supporters. There is a chapter in every state. In Arizona, we actually have six chapters with a lot of them being in the Phoenix area. There's a Flagstaff. There's actually one in Prescott, which is a very um, gun toting area. But yet this is an issue that a lot of people are concerned about. And then of course we have our Tucson chapter. We do fall under the umbrella of every town. So under that umbrella, we have a lot of resources, a lot of opportunity to get involved. Um, in gun safety. Um, I would like to point out, and, and Ricky has heard this um, when we did an LD17, we do not use the language of gun control. We use the language of gun safety. It tends to be a bit more palatable to those who are willing to listen to what is important messaging on firearm safety and safe storage, all of those things. So you will hear us refer to gun safety instead of gun control. And I'm going to talk about one of our programs that's called the Survivor Network. Um, the Evertown Survivor Network is inclusive of anyone who has personally experienced gun violence. Whether you've witnessed an act of gun violence, been threatened or wounded with a gun, or had someone you know wounded or killed with a gun. This includes but is not limited to gun suicides, domestic violence involving a gun, and unintentional shootings. So um, earlier I mentioned my friend Renee. I joined the Survivor Network and actually did um, that program as well. Um, if you are a survivor of gun violence, and again, it doesn't necessarily mean that you yourself have experienced it, but if you've lost a loved one to gun violence, then we encourage you to reach out to us. Um, we have plenty of support and resources for you, and you can do that um, by the quickest way is to text survivor at 644-33. Um, or you could also go to everytown.org backslash survivors. Um, we have one of our Arizona survivor leads on here today, um, Pat Mage. So um, we have two in the state of Arizona, Deborah Parker and Pat Mage, who I'm sure many of you know, she is a wonderful, popular lady. And um, if you, uh, again, are a survivor of gun violence, please reach out to Pat, go ahead and text some of those resources, and we are happy to connect you um, with people who really will support you. Next, um, we're going to talk about one of our big priorities this year. Kathy mentioned that we recently um, got some new leadership. That is this woman up here in this picture. Her name is Angela Farrell Zabala. And um, in our activities, we really vi value diversity. We want to advance equity and we want to demonstrate inclusion. So some of the ways that we are doing that is by really investing in um, Black, Indigenous, and people of color's um, leaders. So um, anyone who is Latinx, Black, um, Native American, Indigenous to Arizona, um, not only are we looking to partner with them and have leaders 
um, in our organization with them. But if you can also provide resources, if you think, hey, this is an organization that could really use mom support, we would love for you to connect us with some of those. Um, it's not really um, just about us growing our leadership, but it's actually to support their causes because we want to we want to acknowledge and talk about the effects that um, the intersectionality between race and gun violence. If we really want to address this problem, we have to be honest with it ourselves. Black people, Indigenous people, women, LGBTQ, they are affected at higher rates of gun violence. So we have to have honest conversations and we have to address those things. And the best way to do that is to be, um, you know, engaging with those communities, partnering with them. And, um, you know, here's a, a statistic that I'll mention. Um, three um, Latinx children and teens are three times more likely to be killed by gun homicide than their white peers. Um, of course, you know, Rick earlier mentioned what's going on in the world. We all know that there is um, heightened sensitivity and hatred right now. And as an organization, we stand against all forms of hate. We want to disarm hate and we know we are inclusive of everybody. One of our biggest priorities in 2024 is going to be um, elections and the way that we um, will move forward in progress with that is to identify gun sense candidates in all races, federal, statewide, House, Senate, I mean, up and down the ballot. We want gun sense candidates at school boards everywhere. I mean, there's really, um, if we're going to make an impact, it's really, we have to have that majority. And so what a gun sense candidate is, is someone who has proven their commitment to life-saving gun laws. The way it works is in 2024, um, when a candidate, you know, says that they're running, we are going to send out a survey to all candidates. We are nonpartisan, so we work with anyone who will um, promote gun violence prevention and who is willing to work with in our goals. So everyone will receive the survey regardless of party. And if they qualify, again, if they identify themselves as a gun saving, um, a gun sense candidate, then um, we go ahead and support them. Now, we don't coordinate with candidates. We're not allowed to do that. But if a candidate has a public event, we certainly will show up. We help them canvas. We help them phone bank. And I encourage you to join us in that. Um, I know that there are lots of organizations working together. We all have the same goals. But if gun um, violence prevention and gun safety is near and dear to you, then please, um, you know, come to our meetings, look out for some of those uh, volunteer events so we can get those candidates um, in office. And um, uh, lastly, I do want to talk about the demand a seat training, because if you are um, running for office, um, every town has a tra uh, training program where they um, we'll give support if you actually go through and um, every town will just kind of explain, you know, they train you on how to run for office and they have courses in the fall and the spring. Um, Representative Gutierrez did the program before she was elected. Um, I'm currently in the program right now to help with elections. And so um, if that's something that you're interested in, again, um, there is a class coming up in the spring. And I do want to give a real example of this. So Tucson Unified, their governing board just recently with July passed a resolution to promote information of safe storage of firearms. And it was critical that on the governing board sit a gun sense candidate, Jennifer Ekstrom, um, along with a very um, supportive board. And so it was a 5-0 vote. So now when you go to Tucson Unified websites, every school website has safe firearm storage information. And so these up and down the ballot, it's going to make a difference for those candidates that support gun safety. And so we're very thankful that this is a priority and we're definitely going to work towards it. So Elections and diversity are two of our priorities. Another priority is legislation. So while Arizona is not up and running yet, we are anticipating playing a lot of defense, um, which is what happens every session it tends to be. Last session, we stopped 10 um, really terrible bad gun bills. 
um, that did end up for the most part being vetoed by Governor Hobbs. Um, so we aren't there yet, but we wanna highlight some federal um, legislation that you can actually take a stand on. Um, the assault weapons ban passed the House back in July of 2022, and then it never gained traction on the Senate side. It's been reintroduced into both pieces of the House and the Senate, but again, it's not getting a whole lot of traction. We know what's going on in the House. There's not a whole lot going on there, but it is actually kind of viable within the Senate. Um, it's Senate Bill 25. Currently, Senator Mark Kelly and Kristen Sinema have not signed on to support the assault weapons ban. Um, so we would ask you in the chat, or you can do the QR code, every town has created a form where you can automatically contact both senators, and you can tell them to please bring this to the floor, to sign on to it, et cetera, that you support it. Um, of course, we all know that they all check who's reaching out to them and what are their views. And this is one of those ones that's important to at least get some movement and show some support. Um, so I'd encourage you if you can click on, click on the link, excuse me, in the chat, or you can certainly use the QR. But if you would ask them to support, that would be amazing. Um, 43 senators have already signed on to Senate Bill 25 for the assault weapons ban. And then something new that is coming around, and again, we need your support if you um, feel that it's important to you. There is currently an online and a gun show loophole. So to close that, um, the ATF needs to hear from you. Because of President Biden's executive actions on gun safety and the Bipartisan Safety Community Act, which was passed in 2022 back in the summer, um, they can actually close the loophole. Previously, you did not have to be a licensed gun dealer to take any amount of weapons, firearms to a gun show or sell online, which meant you did not have to conduct a background check. So people could go to gun shows or contact people online and receive a weapon without having any kind of questions asked. So this closes that loophole. So what it says is if you are going to sell a firearm, you are making profit, that's how the loophole is gonna close, and therefore you have to conduct a background check. So all firearms to felons, domestic abusers, gun traffickers who would be flagged in um, a typical federal background check would now be subject to that. Um, this is a goal of President Biden to expand your background checks to make them universal. Different states have different laws. The gun show loophole, of course, is alive and well here in Pima County. So showing the ATF this support is critical. And it's been determined by every town, which has a group of lawyers working on this. Um, they have a whole legal arm that this is legally permissible and consistent with both the Second Amendment and the authority that Congress gave ATF um, through that Bipartisan Safety Community, Safer Communities Act. So if you were to take out your phone and do like a text message, to 64433. You can put the dash or leave out the dash. It's up to you. It works both ways. Um, it will take you to a, a message will pop back to you. It'll have a clickable link. You can directly contact the ATF and say that you support that closing of the online and gun show loophole, which would essentially put everything back into a background check. Anybody who tries to sell at either venue, so to speak, um, would have to conduct a federal background check. And our last slide is just about our upcoming events. Um, so we do have a November monthly meeting coming up. We do offer them hybrid. So there's a Zoom option or there's an in-person option. Um, it is Thursday, November 2nd at 6 p.m. We will be talking about our advocacy day, which we will be holding in the spring where we travel to the Capitol and meet with our representatives about our gun safety um, priorities. Um, it also has on this QR code or on the link tree that I will drop in the chat, um, different ways again to contact your representatives, your elected officials on those priorities of gun safety. You can RSVP on the link tree. Um, there's also a lot of other great information, including how to contact both Sandra and I. So we just want to close it with everyone is welcome. Um, mom, 
others, um, anybody who's for gun violence prevention, you are more than welcome to join us in this site. So thank you for having us. We appreciate it. <clears throat> thank you.